Hi guys, today I've got a tutorial video for you and I was requested um, by a couple of people um, once I finished this drawing to do a sort of tutorial or a, a guide on how I draw feathers. Um, so this drawing for example, it did take me a while but I did all of these drawing, all of these feathers by hand and I actually did some of them like more than twice because I I did a few bits wrong so um, I'm, I'm well practiced in drawing feathers now but I've always enjoyed drawing feathers from a very young age anyway um, so I felt like I could hopefully share that with you and this is my first ever sort of direct tutorial online so I hope that you guys enjoy this and if you do draw any feathers or anything from this tutorial I'd really like to see it so um, just a heads up, this is not a tutorial with like how to start with Photoshop. Um, I'm presuming at this point you guys know the ins and outs of your digital art software that you, that you choose to use. So, for reference, the brush that I'm going to use is um, the standard round brush that you uh, use, that you can use in Photoshop. Um, I have Shape Dynamics at Prempe... Pre pe pen pressure and I have the minimum diameter set to 15% the rest of the settings remain the same transfer I have uh, pen pressure set to the opacity and also to the flow and I also have smoothing checked uh, the, the brush tip shape is just a generic round brush angle 0 roundness 100% spacing 9% you can take the spacing down if you want to make it even smoother um, but it's not vital to this tutorial. So there you go, we've got that all set up. And the brush looks like this when you draw. So when you apply pressure, it gets um, closer to the actual colour. So I've got black on at the moment. So it looks like this. And um, the pressure is kind of important to get the nice gradient effect. So what I do, to start off with is I draw the very basic shape of a feather so I'm going to go for a one similar to the one that I've drawn here for now like um, a rounded end feather so I, I tend to draw the center line and then you want to draw the shape of the feather around it and this can be like any shape whatsoever if you want a square ended feather you can apply the same techniques just um, change the shape of your feather but for now I'll just do a rounded one and then I'll show you a more pointed one such as the one in my drawing um, a little bit after so it kind of looks like a leaf um, and then what I do is you get these little tufts at the end of a feather um, they can go like several ways they just tend to be a bit messy I'm gonna just do a black feather for this and then I will show you how to incorporate colour. So I start here and bearing in mind this is just how I do feathers myself. This isn't an attempt at a realistic feather. This is an attempt at a stylized feather. So I press hard to get the darker shade and I press lightly or you can colour pick the middle there and once you start getting the right shades I do like a gradient so it's lighter in the middle and darker at the ends and just really gently pull that in so keep colour picking colours in between if you want um, a really handy shortcut for that you hold alt on your keyboard uh, I'm not sure what it is on a Mac sorry um, but it brings up the colour picker as you can see there changes the brush so what you do is you grab that colour in between and you just very, oops, don't do that, very gently paint until you've got, a, it doesn't have to be 100% smooth, we're not going for an airbrushed look, like that's not the, the style I go for. So remembering we've got this side, I draw the sides differently because it gives a little bit of dimension to the feather. So for example one side I tend to do a little bit on the lighter side. So we've got the centre bit here that's a little bit paler 
and then the darker greys here and pull them in from the edges of the feather. And careful not to go too far over each side. And then just neaten up your edges. Doesn't matter about the outside edges just yet because we will work on those later. But yeah, just uh, gradually paint in the different shades until you achieve the look that you want. So what we're going to do is take this dark colour here. Along this half of the feather, we will use the dark colour here to draw the lines of the feather in the paler section. So typically you don't see the lines like this in a feather when you're looking at a real one. Um, I mean, I've got some feathers here for reference actually and these lines are very very thin. You want to keep them non-uniform, you don't want them to all just be straight and follow the curve of the feather. So when it starts blending into the same colour I then take the lighter colour, somewhere around here maybe, and then continue the lines. And this is actually something that I do on multiple things, so it's just sort of contrasting and using the same colours over and over. But always bring them from the centre bit and bring them down. They don't have to be super neat, but make sure some are closer together than others. Okay, and now we look like we've got a really hairy leaf. So we do the same on this side. Take the lighter colour from here and just follow the course of the feathers shape. So we have the centre bit and now we're going to use an eraser. So basically get a soft eraser similar to the one that you were using for your brush and start to neaten up your edges just a little bit. Try and get rid of any of the darker lines you use for the sketch because they will still look quite jarring. I also recommend sort of making this a bit more of a harder edge here because feathers can also sort of just like spring out from this bit. So we still have a hairy bit on a leaf thing and so what we're going to do is we look for the side that is sort of feathering out the most like here. So there's a wider area here and there's like a tighter area here that looks like a face. So what we're going to do is start erasing some of the areas to give it a bit of shape like a feather. Just erase all of that. So take our eraser again and if it's sort of like an area that is a bit wider I recommend doing a wider chunk and just erase all of that. And it's starting to take on the shape of a feather a bit more. Make sure that this point is really defined here and really sharp. This area can be a little bit more um, soft. Um, I don't recommend taking it right up to the edge but you can if you want it to look a little bit more like a, a worn out feather. Um, and you can also do really thin lines to sort of create that depth. And then here again we can see it's a little bit wider but not as wide as the other side. So <clears throat> there's more chance for the feather to actually um, spread out at these areas. So that's why the gap is wider, it's got more chance to break. If that makes sense. <laughs> um. Just try and keep them. Also, don't forget to if you if you take out a bit too much, it's okay. You could just go back in and paint that in, and then 
room keep arising. And the beauty of having it on one layer, as you might have noticed I haven't asked you to do any different layers whatsoever, is that you can erase and paint back in very quickly without having to swap layers or worry about doing it on different layers. So I'm just going to tighten that one up a little bit as well. So there we have something that looks a little bit more like a feather. To add a bit more structure to it, what we'll do is then erase these edges so that they are a bit harder. And this also makes sure that any of the bits that you might have painted back in are in line. It needs to follow the same arc. So, just like that. What we can do is then add tiny fibres back in. So my brush is too big, so I'm going to make it smaller. And if you have the pressure sensitivity on for your shape dynamics, you could just pull it very quick and very smoothly, and you will get a tapered line. So there we go, a stylized feather that you can do in Photoshop. And by no means is this realistic, this is just a way of me sort of showing you how I draw feathers. Um, and I hope that this has been useful. So what I'm going to do now is show you how to apply colour and make something a little bit more exciting. Um, so we're going to apply all of the same techniques, but we're going to do a, let's see, maybe we'll pick one of these colours, that's a nice colour. And I'm going to do a more pointed feather, just like the ones that she wears on her head. Now, something that we haven't had to look for so far, because this feather is black and white, is something called values. Now, if you're not sure what that is, I'm going to explain, and I apologise to anyone who already does know what that is. So, we'll do a feather going straight down. And I want it to taper, so I'm going to do it thin and it's going to be what I would call, like I kept calling them bananas when I was colouring in her hair because they were all like slightly curved like this. Um, what we're going to do, a really straight but pointy feather. So I'll just erase. And obviously because she doesn't have, she has all of the feathers tucked in, you can't really see this, this bit or the feathery wispy bits there. So we have this and it's not a banana but I'm gonna say it looks, well, it looks like a leaf. <laughs> and so for colour, so say we want the feather to be predominantly pink, what we're going to do is then choose a colour that will work as a shadow but will also bring a nice value to it. So keep an eye on this, the new and the current. This is the current and you want something, say we want to keep it warm. So we could probably get away with something a bit more red. Um, let's try... Actually no, let's, let's go more purple. So I'm going to go between purple and blue. Probably go there. So, when you have this colour, what you need to do is check that it's got decent values. So, we go to image, uh, sorry, layer, adjustment layer, hue saturation. And press OK. And this box will pop up here. I'm using Photoshop CS5, so it could be different on your screen. But we've got this new layer which will um, affect all of the layers underneath it. So what we need to do is pull the saturation tab down whoop, and you can see that these two colours are still visibly separate. Now if we were to have a similar colour, say for example we had this pink. That's not the pink. What did I do there? We have this pink and we want to use a slightly pinker colour 
Like, you can see the colours are visibly different here. Not too much different, but say you didn't want a lot of difference in the colour. And then apply that on top. The values are less. So this one's a little bit more dynamic and will actually make the image pop a bit more. So it's even worse when you stick around here and then say, oh well, I want this blue. And you put that in. You're like, wow, yeah, those colours are so different. But they're not, because when you change it to desaturate it, you can see that the colours are of the same value. And that's problematic, especially if you're printing your work, it will not read as nicely. So that's what happened with a lot of her feathers. As you can see, I have my layers here. The painting is all on one layer, apart from that one feather at the top. <laughs> and um, if I did this, you can see some of her feathers are still not quite right. But I got to the point where I needed to finish. You can see the feathers down here is where I was concentrating more on the values. And the, these ones here and here. And on the bird here. You can see the bird is kind of washed out as well. So the values aren't even that great on here. It's not as visible when it's in colour. But when you've got colours that are too similar, it can read quite badly with print. As well as on the screen. Depending on the type of screen you have. So even though these two colours, the pink and the blue, they're lovely together, but they wouldn't work well together as a painting. You would need to do something different about them. So we're going to use these two here. And I also recommend setting up an adjustment layer with lowered, saturate, lowered saturation because you could keep checking throughout the whole process. So we want, uh, say we want this side to be the lighter side. We'll colour that side in pink, like we planned. And this side's our darker side, so we'll use the purple straight up. Just neaten it off a little bit. Okay, so what we can do here is start colour picking between these two. So what you can do is you could do it to one side or you can actually do it in the thing as well. Just uh, use your pressure sensitivity to get a colour in between and start pulling that through. So remember how we had the darker points at the top and the bottom of the feather? Check your values. It's not the best, but we'll just add some shade to it. That's a bit better. So then just again start blending through, um, making sure you keep your original colour in the centre. Okay, so now we're going to take this colour and lay that as the lighter colour on here. So instead of doing the shadows, I've done the highlight after the shadow. And start pulling that through and softening the edges with that as well. Because this is a pointier feather, I'm going to make the blending a bit more pointed as well. And then just if you want to gradually bring in a bit and try and lighten it. There we go, but we've still got our shadows. We can still see the two defined sides. Check the values. Yep, that's not too bad. I'm gonna soften a few bits. Okay. So then we take 
one of these colours, probably the darker of the two, and start drawing your lines on. And now we're going to erase. Remember to keep the shape as organic as possible. You don't want it to end up being too stiff looking, too fake looking, it needs to look like it could float away. So we've got our wider edges here. And our more tightened edges here. Obviously if you have a coloured background this will start to show thro uh, through. I find that feathers start to fray a bit more towards the bottom so you can start like really eating into it here and it will give it a little bit more of a jagged effect. And again just make sure your edges are arcing the correct way all in one straight line. Add a bit more here. And then let's add some little fragments inside as well. But yes, this is the way that I approach feathers, so let me know if this is informative and if any of you do draw a feather from this tutorial, I'd really like to see it. Um, sorry that I can't really apply this to other softwares, I don't use other software, um, I pretty much just stick with Photoshop, And but I'm pretty sure that if you have the knowledge of the tools in other digital software you will be able to achieve the same effect, if not a better one. So thanks for watching guys and I will see you in my next video, bye!